Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a bit of a difficult conversation. It's uncomfortable, but it's a conversation that must be honored. And it's probably not typical to what you would see here at Above Life Channel. Some of you have pushed me a bit or challenged me to step into or to at least to honor some of the difficult situations that people have to face in their lives. Things that are, that might hit home and be difficult for others to feel or sense, especially you who are empathic and clairsentient. Today we're going to talk about a difficult issue, child abuse, specifically child sexual abuse. Some of you may be aware that Corey Feldman, a famous actor, a childhood actor in Hollywood, has prepared a documentary that was supposed to be aired on Monday, March 9th, I think it was, in which he was going to make a public stand and share the truth about some child molesters in Hollywood. He was gonna name some names, point, point some fingers and name some names. And it wasn't just about him, it wasn't about him, it was also about his friend, Corey Haim. Now I know many of you that watch this channel have seen the video that I did with Corey Haim. I did channel Corey Haim in the afterlife and you can check out the playlist if you're interested in, in listening to my first conversation with Corey from the afterlife. And so this is interesting because the situation is we're dealing with someone who is currently living, who wants to share and express truth, what he perceives as his truth, what he believes in his heart to be his truth. And he feels as though he is helping to better things or create change for others because of that. At the same time, we're also dealing with someone from the afterlife. And the question is, in the ethics of this or the integrity of this, is it right to be the voice for this person who is in the afterlife? And if so, at what point is there a way to honor both of the Corys? All right, so let's have a conversation about that. In order to do that, I'm gonna do something a little bit different here at Above Life Channel. I'm gonna bring in Archangel Michael. I do work with Archangels when I do private sessions. So I'm gonna bring in Archangel Michael. Angels are androgynous. They are also non-denominational, not associated or affiliated with a particular religion, religion or culture, but a spiritual helper to help create safe and sacred space for our conversation today. Archangel Michael has a beautiful blue energy. Just so happens I'm wearing blue because Michael is a great, keeper of sacred energy to allow for the feeling of safe and sacred space. So we're going to bring in Michael. We're also going to invite Corey Haim to come in and to be part of our conversation today. This is an important topic. It's a real topic, and especially for those who are survivors of child sexual abuse. You are so brave. You are not broken. No one has taken anything from you. You are an incredible, complete, whole spirit and the energy here is about expanding your love and your power as a whole person as a whole whole and complete beautiful spirit because that is who you are even if you don't feel that i know that to be true all right I had to get a little bit of a oh yeah come on you guys are awesome energy for that divine inner child within you. A beautiful gold circle of energy now coming in. That golden energy honors the spirit of who you are. It connects into your chakra called the solar plexus. If you do yoga or med meditation, you know what I'm talking about. Right into that solar plexus, the center of your body, just holding your spirit so pristine, so perfect and pure, regardless of what the physical body has endured, your spirit is whole and beautiful and perfect. Perfect. All right. So, hmm. Corey, Corey Ham, it's it's a pleasure to to connect with you again. It's nice to meet you in this circumstance because I feel as though you are in a position to advocate for the spirit of others and for the legacy of your human life, and also give us some understanding of why Corey Feldman is presenting things in this way 
and what's going on in this process with the documentary, um, The Truth of Two Corys. I think that's what it's called. I don't know exactly what it's called, you guys, something like that. So can you share with us kind of energetically what your sense of this situation is? He says, first of all, I want to mention my family. I want to surround them with love and please send your prayers to my family because this is a difficult time for them to, to um, especially my mom, to have to deal with this. And um, so I'd ask for that. He says, I ask for that. There's unconditional love, you know. There's unconditional love. He says, I don't blame Corey for anything. Um, it's not his fault what happened to us. He says, um, I think... I think it's easier for Corey to say that, um, so Corey Haim talking about Corey Feldman. Corey Haim talking, speaking for Corey Haim right now. I think it's easier for Corey to be able to share a story of the experiences that we've had from the perspective of honoring me. I think he's doing what, what he feels is right and I can't, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. You shouldn't be angry about that either. But you know, I'm not really in a place, I really shouldn't tell people how to feel, but I'm not angry. I think he's protecting himself by being able to come out and share and say it was all about me or putting the conversation kind of about me I think it makes it safe for him to to feel strong, to feel brave enough to share his own story. And I mean, he's an actor too. You know, he's an actor. He he likes the the limelight. You know, he likes the the silver screen. He I think he would like to be a producer. I I, I know that he would like to be a director or producer. I know that he would like to be screened at a you know Sundance Film Festival or to, to get some recognition in that regard in general. I know that he has aspirations in that way, but I'm not I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say that he is using me because he doesn't understand within his own pain what what is going on. He just knows that he's feeling a lot of pain and he's connecting it to me. Again, you guys, Corey Feldman is connecting his pain to Corey Haim. Corey Haim is speaking now. Corey Haim is channeling in order to share some insight about this situation. And the tr you know, the truth is he's bringing attention. There's, gonna, there's a lot of attention that is gonna be paid now to those who are children in Hollywood who have experienced abuse, who have been mistreated. I mean, it goes all the way back, you know? It's, it's just part of the system. And that's not acceptable. That's not good enough. It destroys lives. It destroyed me. It destroyed me. And it's not because I wasn't a good person or strong person. I just, I couldn't have regular relationships. There was no trust. That was all taken from me. I, I never, I was never able to stop being angry and confused. And that's not to say that you can't heal because I believe you can. I know now, so Archangel, you guys, Archangel Raphael comes in as, as Corey Haim is speaking. Archangel Raphael is coming in. We're working on healing, my friends. This is a unique video at Above Life Channel. I'm showing you all the Bridget, the stuff that I do when I'm in private session or in group session. Archangel Raphael comes in with a beautiful green energy vibration that is honoring the healing process of all of you who are watching, who have been victims of or impacted by abuse from your loved ones. Um, maybe you've you've been a witness to someone sharing their personal story and it's impacted you so deeply and and maybe you've experienced it. Maybe this is your story. And so Archangel Raphael steps in to honor the healing energy vibration. There's kind of like this spiral, this beautiful green spiral with a little bit of gold, kind of glittery accents to it. And as Corey Haim is speaking, he is sharing from the heart about how the energy of abuse affected him as a human and as an afterlife guest now here, as an afterlife spirit. He is able to speak, energetically speak, clairsentiently heart space speak from a point of enhancing the healing. 
So he is building upon the energy that is being shared by Corey Feldman and helping to stir up things so that there can be healing. There is an advocacy component that Corey Feldman talks about, talks about, talks about, whether you believe him or not, whether you think he's just out for attention, whether you feel like he's full of it or he needs some help himself for counseling. It doesn't matter what you think of Corey Feldman. His intention is to is multi-tiered. I'm going to say that as a psychic, I can look at him and I can see the multi-tiers of his intention. But Corey Haim is speaking about and connecting to an understanding, being more compassionate about instead of making it all about the Corey, the Corey Feldman and the Corey Haim, make it about the children. And that's what's happening here. And that Corey Haim is bringing in with the Archangel Raphael green energy, the swirling spiral on the heart space is to enhance your ability to heal. Your ability to heal the child within you that has felt like it has been torn apart, that has been through pain, that has suffered abuse. This is an opportunity for you to just receive that pure energy support, the support that you didn't have before, calling back in any parts or facets of your heart space that were taken from you, or that feel that they were shattered or broken too much into pieces that cannot be replaced. We make you whole by breathing in that energy of that beautiful spiral and gifting back to you the pureness of your essence because you are a beautiful child of the universe of God, of creator, and you are perfect. So Corey, you are here to present what in relation to the healing aspect of children? Of everyone, he says, of people. People can heal, people can change. This does not have to define who you are. It doesn't have to mark you. It doesn't have to be like a scar. If it is a scar, you can just tattoo right over that. Tattoo right over it. Numbing the pain creates more addictions and cycles of pain so that others around you can just, when you're spiraling like out of control, they just, they get hurt and you don't, you don't want that. You don't want that. You're strong, you're brave. They didn't take your spirit, they did not take it. You are part of a world that is loving and that can help you if you can embrace it. Allow yourself to heal. I know it's hard. I know it's not just flip a switch and magic happens. I know it feels like that. I know it does. But for me, the healing comes in allowing peace. Allowing yourself to not have to be compared or to make a, make a judgment about who's right, who's wrong. Isn't it the point of doing what is best th that you think is your, the best that you can do to, to, to speak, to give a voice, to heal? Maybe that's what Corey's doing. Did you think about that? That's what Corey Feldman's doing. I, I will say, however you may judge him or feel him, you got to not let that distract you from the point that he's trying to make, even if he's not maybe making it in the best way. He just, he's trying to help. I'm not angry at him. He's trying to help. He's trying to help. Is he helping himself? Yeah, he's going to help himself because that's what Corey does. That's what Corey does. This is what my brother Corey does. That's what he does. That's what he does. And you know, if he can get some, some legs on this and, and make a name for himself or get some kind of producing credits or directing that I, I you know I'm I'll be glad for him but let's be clear all right let's be clear now it's not my story it's not because of my story I'm 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 a I'm above and beyond that now I'm a, I'm transcendent like he's you guys he's showing me like I'm I'm not associated with the story of what happened to my body. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not angry, I'm not there. I've been in healing and kind of like recovery, you might say, to make sure that I really understand this. And am I saying I understand it? No, no, I don't understand it. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, it was a purpose. It was a, re I had to experience. I'm not gonna say that either. You don't have to experience that. People can make different choices, including abusers. They can make different choices.
and systems can make choices not to protect people who are abusers. There can be more support for people who are victims of violent acts such as this, because it's not just about kids, you know, it's not just about kids. It's about adults who feel broken and who continue to punish themselves, feeling like it's their fault. It's not. It's nobody's fault. And if this, and if this is making you uncomfortable, if the whole idea of a documentary, a film about my story, Corey's story, the yeah, it's messed up. It's messed up. Let's say that. It is messed up. It's all kind of mixed together and messed up. Yeah. And does it really matter what happened to me? Why does it matter to you? Why do you care so much about my story? Why? Why is that? Ask yourself that. Why? Why is that? Are you scared? Are you scared your story is going to come out? Are you scared that it could happen to you or your kids? People that you care about, you love? Are you afraid of that? I think it's normal. It's probably normal to be afraid of that. But you got to ask yourself that. Why does it bother you so much? It's easier to be angry than to be scared. Is that why? I can understand that. I can understand that. I'm not angry at Corey. I'm not going to tell you that he's lying either because I. It's. it's just... Everything, all the facts of things are all jumbled up and I'm, but I'm not angry. I'm not angry at him. I'm not. I'm not going to be mad at him. I can't. I can never, I can never be totally mad at Corey, you know? He does get these crazy ideas in his head and he just, he won't stop. One thing you got to admire about Corey. He doesn't give up. He does not give up. Yeah, misguided. Yeah, see, see, Bridget's talking to me in her head too. She's saying, well, is he misguided? What's going on? Because Bridget's got some feelings about this. You got some feels about this, huh, Bridget? I do. I do, Corey. But I want to honor you and respect you and your, your experience as a human and the people who are going to be impacted by you, that are fans of you, and that feel so sorry for you. It's like, you can't feel sorry for me. It's, you got, it's time for forgiveness. It's time for forgiveness. All of the victims of abuse, of sexual abuse, need to forgive themselves. It was not your fault. You weren't in the wrong place at the wrong time and that's your fault. Or you weren't, there's nothing about you that created the problem, it's the other person. You didn't deserve any of that, none of it. And it confuses everything, it complicates everything, it messes with your brain, it messes with your brain. And that's not right. It's not right. It's just not, it's not okay, it's just not okay. It's not okay. And no, I wouldn't have shared my story. I have a few. I wouldn't have talked about it. I wouldn't have to answer that question. I wouldn't have talked about it. And again, like he's like, I'm not saying it's bad that he's talking about it. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to I'm not going to say right or wrong. Yes or no, I'm not going to say any of that. You kind of miss the point then, don't you? It is a healing. It's a healing time. It's a healing time. Are you ready for that? It's a healing time. Everybody, everybody could use that. All right, Corey. You guys have been talking to Corey Haim. Unusual, isn't it? Bringing an Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael to assist in the healing process for anyone who is watching this. Anyone who's up in arms and angry at Corey Feldman. And again, I, I'm not defending either one of the Coreys. I'm not defending. I do have some feelings about Corey Feldman and perhaps maybe what's motivating him. But I don't, I'm not against him. I'm not for him. I'm not, I'm not going to validate the experience of what's being shared at this point because Corey Haim isn't doing that. He's actually showing his support for Corey Feldman and what Corey Feldman went through abuse-wise and how it's safer for Corey Feldman as, an, as a victim of child sexual abuse in Hollywood. It's, it's safer for him emotionally, mentally, and maybe even physically to share the story as in it's Corey Haim's story and not his own. Now I'm not, that doesn't go, I'm not saying anything about specific allegations or that kind of a thing that was brought up in that movie that was just clearly alleged, everything's alleged. Um, there's no criminal investigations or anything like that. So everything's just alleged at this point. But it's very clear that 
the experiences that both of the Corys had were on the level of um, sur their survivors, even in spirit, of abuse. And there's a lot of complicated portions of there's some truths in what is being shared, and there are some mis connections that are made versus what happened to Corey Feldman and what happened to Corey Haim. So I think we just need to, even if you're fans, you guys, of the Corys, or you're, you're, you're an advocate for child sex abuse and you're really frustrated by this, or you're a survivor and it really angers you and you're afraid that all the attention now is gonna be placed on the fact if Corey Feldman is, you know, doing this to get attention or get money or whatever he's doing, the judgments about that is taken away from the real issue, which is the abuse, the child sexual abuse. And so there are many different parts of this conversation that may continue to evolve over time, but try not to let yourself get totally taken off guard by the, these two these two individuals, the Corey in the human life and the Corey in the afterlife. Recognize the energy that comes through, the forgiveness energy, the understanding energy that Corey Haim brings and projects at Corey Feldman. And let that, along with the assistance of Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael, let that be the truth that you sink your teeth into, that you ground yourself to, that you open your heart and have the ability to receive with that beautiful green spiral, the energy of healing, whatever that means for you, whatever it looks like for you. There's not one size fits all. And healing isn't just an event like, okay, it's done, we're done. It is a choice that you continue to consistently make. It's a lifestyle choice. It's a habit to continuously heal and grow. Healing happens on many different levels and in many different ways. I encourage you to reach out and get support. Go seek the advice of a counselor, a guidance counselor, a trusted friend, or an adult that you can trust to share your story and to get help that you need in order to work through and process the energy that is connected to abuse because there is. Even though you're a big person now, an adult now, and have power now, your inner child deserves to be heard, to be loved, to be reunited inside of you, to feel whole and complete because you are a beautiful spirit, regardless of what you've suffered or experienced in your physical body. Your spirit transcends. So this is Bridget here at Above Life Channel with a very serious topic today, something a little bit different we have discussed, and I hope that it does inspire you. I hope that you have hope, that hope grows in your heart space as a result of this conversation today. Remember, it is your life, a precious life it is. It's your life, so live it, live it. Live it here and now in the present, not in the past. Live it here and now. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching Above Life Channel. Make sure that you share your comments below if you think that someone else would really benefit from this particular video. Don't be shy about sharing it. Even if you need to say, hey, I found this video. I don't know if I believe this or this lady might be a little crazy. I'm totally fine with that. As long as you're helping other people and getting the message out, if you feel inspired to share, you can go for it. Totally fine. Thank you so much for being here. I look forward to connecting with you again in our weekly channeling sessions at Above Life Channel on YouTube.